I do want to ask you, uh, Vice President Biden, about China. Let's talk about China more broadly. Uh, there have, of course, President Trump has said that they should pay for not being fully transparent in regards to the coronavirus. If you were president, would you make China pay? And please be specific. What would that look like? What I'd make China do is play by the international rules, not like he has done. He has caused the deficit of China to go up, not down, with China, up, not down. We are making sure that in order to do business in China, you have to give all your intellectual property. You have to get a, have a partner in China. It's 51 percent. We would not do that at all, number one. Number two, we're in a situation where China would have to play by the rules internationally as well. When I met with Xi that, and uh, when I was still vice president, he said we're setting up air identification zones in the, in the South China Sea. You can't fly through them. I said, we're going to fly through them. We just flew B-52, B-1 bombers through it. We're not going to pay attention. They have to play by the rules. And what's he do? He embraces guys like the thugs like in North Korea and, and, uh, and the Chinese president and Putin and others. And he pokes his finger in the eye of all of our friends, all of our allies. We make up only, we were 25 percent, 25 percent of the world's economy. We need to be having the rest of our friends with us saying to China, these are the rules. You play by them or you're going to pay the price for not paying by them economically. That's the way I will run it. And that's what we did in upholding steel tariffs and a range of other things when we were president and vice president. All right. Let's talk about oh, North oh, Korea. Oh, oh. Excuse let, let, me. No, I have to yes. respond to that. Okay. Very quickly, and then we're going to move on to North Korea. with a billion Korea. and a half dollars from China to Not manage after true. spending 10 minutes in office and being in Air Force Two, number one. Number two, there's a very strong email talking about your family wanting to make $10 million a year for introductions. President Trump, on China policy, though, what no, specifically no, but are you going to do? What specifically are you going to do to make China pay? You've said you're going First to make all, them pay. China is paying. They're paying billions and billions of dollars. I just gave twenty eight billion dollars. New sanctions. I just gave twenty eight billion dollars to our farmers. Taxpayers China, money. It's what? Taxpayers money. Didn't no, come no, from yeah, China. You know the taxpayers. It's called China. China paid $28 billion, and you know what they did to pay it, Joe? They devalued their currency, and they also paid up. And you know who got the money? Our farmers, our great farmers, because they were targeted. You never charged them anything. Also, I charged them 25 percent on dumped steel because they were killing our steel industry. We were not going to have a steel industry. Okay. And now we have a steel okay. industry. Okay. Vice President Biden, your response, please. My response is, look, this isn't about re — there's a reason why he's bringing up all this malarkey. There's a reason for it. He doesn't want to talk about the, the, the substantive issues. It's not about his family and my family. It's about your family. And your family's hurting badly. If you're making less than, if you're a middle class family, you're getting hurt badly right now. You're sitting at the kitchen table this morning deciding, well, we can't get new tires, they're bald because we have to wait another month or so. Or are we going to be able to pay the mortgage? Or who's going to tell her she can't go back to, to community college? They're the decisions you're making in the middle class families like I grew up in Scranton and Claymont. They're in trouble. We should be talking about your families, but that's the last thing he wants to talk about. I want, to, is a I want to talk about statement. North Korea. Me, I do want to second, turn to please. 10 seconds, Mr. President. That's 10 a seconds. typical political statement. Let's get off this China thing. And then he looks, the family, around the table, everything. Just right. a typical politician when I see that. Let's talk I'm about North Korea. I'm not a typical Korea politician. Okay, That's President. why I got elected. That let's was, talk let's about get off the subject of China. Let's talk around, sitting around the table. All right. Come on, Joe, you can do better. We're going to talk about North Korea now. President Trump, you've met with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un three times. You've talked about your beautiful letters with him. You've touted the fact that there hasn't been a war or a long-range missile test. And yet North Korea recently rolled out its biggest ever intercontinental ballistic missile and continues to develop its nuclear arsenal. Do you see that as a betrayal of the relationship you no. forged? Just 30 seconds here because we need to get on to the next So segment. when I met with Barack Obama, we sat in the White House... Right at the beginning, had a great conversation. It was supposed to be 15 minutes, and it was well over an hour. He said, the biggest problem we have with North is North Korea. He indicated we will be in a war with North Korea. Guess what? It would be a nuclear war. And he does have plenty of nuclear capability. In the meantime, I have a very good relationship with him. Different kind of a guy, but he probably thinks the same thing about me. We have a different kind of a relationship. We have a very good relationship, and there's no war. And, you know, about oh, two months ago, 
He broke into a certain area. They said, oh, there's going to be trouble. I said, no, they're not, because he's not going to do that. And I was right. Look, instead of being in a war where millions of people, Seoul, you know, is 25 miles away, millions and millions, 32 million people in Seoul, millions of people would be okay. dead right now. President we Trump, that's 30 war, seconds. Thank relationship. you. Vice President Biden, to you, North Korea conducted four nuclear tests under the Obama administration. Why do you think you would be able to rein in this persistent threat? Because right? I'd make it clear, which we were making clear to China, they had to be part of the deal because here's the re I made it clear and as a spokesperson of the administration when I went to China that they said, why are you moving your missile defense up so close? Why are you moving more forces here? Why are you continuing to do uh, um, uh, m military maneuvers with South Korea. I said, because North Korea is a problem and we're going to continue to do it so we can control them. We're going to make sure we can control them and make sure they cannot hurt us. And so if you want to do something about it, step up and help. If not, it's going to continue. What has he done? He's legitimized North Korea. He's talked about his good buddy who's a thug a thug, and he talks about how we're better off. And they are, have much more capable missiles, able to reach U.S. territory much more easily than ever did before. Let me follow up with you, Vice President Biden. You've said you wouldn't meet with Kim Jong-un without preconditions. Are there any conditions under which you would meet with him? On the condition that he would agree that he would be drawing down his nuclear capacity to get that the Korean Peninsula should be nuclear-free zone. All right, let's move on to American families. Kristen, they tried Very to quickly, meet with 10 him. seconds, President. They tried to meet with him. He I wouldn't didn't. do it. He didn't like Obama. He didn't like him. He wouldn't do it. Okay, I, I got to give him a chance they to tried. respond to that before he wouldn't we move do on. It. You and know that's I... okay. You know what? North Korea, we're not in a war. We have a good relationship. You know, people don't understand. Having a good relationship Trump, with leaders of other countries is a good thing. We have a lot of questions to get yes. to. Not Your response. Like we had a good relationship with Hitler before he, in fact, invaded Europe, the rest of Europe. Come on. The reason he would not meet with President Obama is because President Obama said, we're going to talk about denuclearization. We're not going to legitimize you. And we're going to continue to put stronger and stronger sanctions on you. That's why he wouldn't meet with us. All right, let's and it didn't move happen. on. Let's Excuse move me. on and talk he about American families. He left me a mess, Chris. President Trump. Okay, we they do need to move on. They left me a mess. North Korea was a mess. We and need to move on. And in fact, if you so remember the first two or three months, tonight, there was a very Trump. dangerous period of my first three months before we sort of worked things out a little bit. Okay. There was a very day. They left us a mess, and Obama would be, I think, the first to say it was the single biggest problem he thought that our country. Okay. Had.